In this video, we will study the pathology of vasculitis. We will study the morphological changes of each type of vasculitis and then we will correlate these morphological features with the clinical features in each case. So let's start. Vasculitis means the inflammation of vessel walls and depending upon the location of the vessels, it can be divided into large vessel vasculitis which includes giant cell arthritis and takayasu arthritis. The second category is medium vessel vasculitis which includes polyarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki's disease. And the third category is small vessel vasculitis which includes Wegener's granulomatosis, microscopic polyangitis and Churk's strauss syndrome. So let's start with the pathological features of giant cell arthritis. In giant cell arthritis, the main arteries that are involved include aorta, arteries of head and neck which include vertebral arteries and branches of carotid arteries. Out of all these arteries, the branches of carotid arteries such as facial artery, temporal artery and ophthalmic arteries are the most commonly involved. So the affected arteries are aorta, vertebral arteries and most commonly the branches of carotid such as temporal artery and facial artery. Now on gross specimen of an artery affected with giant cell arthritis, the artery appears like a thickened cord. And this thickness is not uniform along the vessel wall, rather it is in form of patchy involvement. And as the artery undergoes thickening, the ultimate consequence is reduced lumen of the vessel which causes ischemic symptoms such as jaw claudication, temporal headache and blurring of vein. So overall the gross features are thickening of vessels in cord-like manner in patchy areas and reduced lumen of the vessel. Now for microscopic features of giant cell arthritis, the mnemonic to remember is giants in the center and army all around. Giants in the center and army all around. The first keyword phrase is giants in the center. Here giants denote granulomatous inflammation with giant cells and in the center means that granulomatous inflammation with giant cells occur in the central layer of vessel wall which is tunica media. So you see granulomas with giant cells in tunica media and as these giant cells and granulomatous in, uh, inflammation increases it causes breakdown of internal elastic lamina which is the barrier between tunica intima and tunica media. Thus you see fragmentation of internal elastic lamina due to formation of granulomas in the vessel wall. The second keyword phrase is army all around. This army denotes a mixture of both acute and chronic inflammatory cells and all around means that it is present in all layers of vessels. Such a pattern which involves all layers of vessels is known as panitroitus. Now along with these changes there are some changes that occur somewhat late in the course of disease. And these late and long term changes are applicable not only to giant cell arthritis but to all types of vasculitis. These changes include thickening of tunica intima and fibrosis of vessel wall. This fibrosis happens because inflammation destroys the walls of vessel and as a repair to this destruction this fibros fibrous tissue is formed in the vessel wall which results in fibrosis. Now these two changes are also the basis of clinical features of all types of vasculitis. You can imagine that when the tunica intima gets thickened the lumen of vessel wall will be reduced and when the lumen of the vessel wall will be reduced it will result in ischemic symptoms. Secondly, as the original elastic and muscular tissue of vessel wall is replaced by weak fibrous tissue. So due to this weak fibrous tissue, the vessel wall in the vascular the vessel wall in vasculitis will tend to develop aneurysms or dilatations. So in vasculitis, ischemic symptoms and aneurysms are the main clinical features. So overall on microscopic view of giant cell arthritis, you see granulomatous inflammation with giant cells in tunica media along with fragmentation of internal elastic lamina and you see pan arthritis which is a mixture of acute and chronic inflammatory cells in all three layers of blood vessel. Now here is a diagram for giant cell arthritis. These endothelial cells are in tunica intima. This middle layer with smooth muscle cells is tunica media. And this last layer is tunica adventitia. Here you can see that in tunica media there are giant cells and here this is fragmentation of internal elastic lamina. Secondly you can see these blue colored dots that are present all along the vessel wall. These are white blood cells and this feature is called panarthritis. Now at this stage it is worth mentioning that sometimes when you take a biopsy of vessel wall and observe it under microscope, these granulomatous inflammation with giant cells might not be present. But even if, the, if you see these non-specific WBCs, WBCs along the vessel wall and you know that artery under observation is among the ones that are typically involved in giant cell arthritis, you can make the diagnosis of giant cell arthritis. 
So the point is that these giant cells with granulomatous inflammation are not essential for the diagnosis of giant cell arthritis. The most important points are no, any type of white blood cell infiltrate in the vessel walls that are typically involved in giant cell arthritis such as facial artery and temporal artery. Now the second type of large vessel vasculitis is Takayasu arthritis. In Takayasu arthritis, the vessels involved are arch of aorta and its three main branches that are brachiocephalic artery, common carotid artery and subclavian artery. And as I already told you that in vasculitis, the damaged vessels are replaced by fibrous tissue which has a tendency to undergo aneurysmal dilatation. So you see aortic root dilatation. Aortic root is the part of aortic arch where it originates from the left ventricle. So aortic root might be dilated in Takayasu arthritis. Secondly, as the vasculitis causes intimal thickening and narrowing of vessels, so grossly it would appear on cut section of these three cut section of these three branches that they may be narrowed or stenosed. So overall on gross specimen of Takayasu's arthritis, you will note aortic root dilatation and you will see narrowed vessels. This narrowing occurs at the level of aortic arch and its branches such as brachiocephalic, common carotid and subclavian. Now the microscopic features of Takayasu arthritis are similar to giant cell arthritis which means granulomatous inflammation in tunica media and mixed infl inflammatory infiltrate in all layers. But the only difference is that in Takayasu arthritis these classical changes may not be present altogether. Rather there is a spectrum ranging from adventitial mononuclear infiltrates to transmural inflammatory infiltrates affecting all three layers which is known as pan arthritis. So you can see inflammation only in the adventitial layers, you can see inflammation in all three layers or you can see granulomatous inflammation in tunica media. Any of these three changes can be present. And at last, similar to all types of vasculitis, the late changes include intimal thickening and fibrosis.